Hello and welcome to the Home for Anime. I am your host, GPC, Great Podcaster Cali, and I would like to welcome you yet again to the celebration of Kyoto Animation, also known as Volume 4. So today I have a very special guest with me to talk about a very interesting anime. You may know him on Instagram as Igirisu Weeaboo, or you might know him in person as Igirisu Weeaboo, because some people don't give their real names, and honestly, I can respect that. How are you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Like you said, uh, Kyoto Animation, a great studio, and yeah, we're here today to talk about free. I'm excited. Yes, yes yeah. we are. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. I mean, like, hard sculpted boys with soft personalities. That is, that is free in a nutshell. Thanks for listening, everyone. Mm. Truly, like, that, I know that's like a really weird place to start, but like, I mean, of course, like, to start off, free is about swimming, like, to give the most bare bones explanation yet. Like, there's this guy named Haruka who has a friend named uh, Makoto. And they are former swimmers who kind of get back into it their second year of high school. And they're just, they're, everybody is a swimmer for some reason. Like, everyone. <laughs> they're either, and everyone's really good at it, yeah. Yeah, and everyone's really good at it, except for the people who aren't. Like, the whole conflict of the first season is that Makoto and Haruka's uh, teammate, from their middle school days, uh, Rin, who went overseas to study in Australia, came back to Japan with a chip on his shoulder. And that is literally what the entire first season is about. Like, them trying to reach him with the power of friendship and whatnot. <laughs> and understanding each other through swimming. Like, it's... All right. Dude, this anime is so weird, and I didn't think I was going <laughs> to like it. Like, I, I was like... Like, okay, this is the celebration of Kyoto Animation. I have to watch people swim, which is something that I don't do very well for 30 something episodes. Like, am I going mm. to find enjoyment from this? And this is actually one of the better anime that Kyoto Animation has made. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, man. Uh, it is a bit of a strange story, like, because it's not like a, a traditional like, sports anime. It's way more into like the whole feelings thing and like the way the characters kind of just uh feed off each other's emotion and is it is kind of cheesy but at the same time like the characters are so strong and so unique like it really draws you in so i had a lot of fun with it uh i got into it personally because i swam back in the day i used to do a lot of swimming as a kid so that was a big reason for me watching it. And again, I just love a lot of Kyo Annie shows. So I thought, you know what? It's time to give free a go. And yeah, it was really something. <laughs> yeah, like it's so surreal to have a a side movie that acts as a bridge between seasons actually work so well. Um, something that I mentioned in some of the prior episodes that i've done is that kyoto animation is a studio that kind of uses movies as either a bridge to tell stories or as the conclusion to them and Mm. they nailed that with the bridge between seasons two and three but somehow being able to tell a mostly compelling story over the course of three seasons because i would argue that season two is the strongest but yes like still to have like a fairly consistent run throughout those three seasons and then have i think three recap movies one prequel movie and then of course the the side story movie that bridges the gap and then two finale movies that haven't come out in the united states yet like three is probably their biggest franchise kyoto animations other than sound euphonium Mm. it's crazy that free ran for like nearly 10 years as well it started like what 2013 i believe so it was like over nine years of content yeah. in yeah. japan like it's a really big series that like is it's crazy because a lot of kill annie's other stuff is like you know not not as long so 
Yeah, it's it was, interesting. Especially not their greatest production ever, which is the greatest anime ever, which is Violet Evergarden. Like that's only like <laughs> 12, 13 episodes long and two movies. Yeah, that anime does look beautiful. Like, it is wow. amazing. It's my favorite mm. of all time. Okay, okay. I I really like K on from Kyoan, you know. <laughs> Dude, I need to watch that's 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 like next on the list actually. Oh, that's great. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Yeah. <laughs> but the direction of free and the route that it takes to get to its conclusion, which again I haven't seen the two finale movies because they haven't been released in the States, but mm. I know you have, so I'm yeah. sure you can tell me. <laughs> From beginning to end, would you say that Free is a strong story? 100%. Um, quick shout out to all the anime. The, the UK is like a provider for bringing anime over here. And yeah, surprisingly, we got the final concluding movies uh, in cinemas over here, in theaters, for a very limited release. Crazy before America, so yeah, <laughs> very, very strange. I was able to see that. Uh, yeah, the thing about free, like you said, it starts off with um, uh, Har- Haruka and Rin, and you know, the whole him being like a not a bad guy, but he's the rival school swim, swim club's uh, lead, and all that kind of stuff. So it starts off like a lot of feelings, but by the end. Like the conclusion is really good, and e- even up to season three, it's like it's not just about quote unquote like you know hot guys, but and swimming. There's mm-hmm. so much more to it, and it's like the whole story about uh, not knowing what you want to do with your future, and just kind of finding that out through swimming and through friends, seeing what your friends are doing. Like at one point, Makoto wants to you know, become a swim teacher. He doesn't want to go for like a... Um, the competitive swimming route. Exactly. No, he doesn't want to be competitive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rin does and stuff. Haruka feels lost and, you know, it, it, it speaks volumes, not not just about swimming. It's like, it just kind of, anyone can relate to it on that personal level. Like, what do you want to do with your life? And it's just so nice just to see the routes that they take. Like, mm-hmm. mm. So, yeah, and it, it starts off so small, like, you know, uh, these uh, young friends, the local school swimming club, and it just becomes this grand thing over, like, three seasons and uh, the concluding two movies and, like you said, all the uh, bridge movies and prequel movie. And, yeah, it ran for nine years in Japan. Like, it's, it's like a low-key series, but it's, it, the, the fandom's there. Like, it's crazy. Like, even yeah. when I went to see it in theatres, there was, like, two chicks in... Uh, you know, you know the the squad jackets from like season one. Oh, like, the Iwatobi uh, swim yeah, club the, jackets. Yeah, the Iwatobi uh, swim club jackets. Yeah, and like oh my god, they girls. had those on. Yeah, and and like they they had like two little plushies of Rin and uh, Haruka. <laughs> That's so cute. It, I know, right? Yeah, it was so nice to see him there. So, yeah, not not the biggest series compared to like you know the super popular Shonen, but Breeze dope. It told a really cool story over like you know, a long time from something that you don't usually see from Kyo Annie. But yeah, I was happy with it, real happy with it, you know. And it's so cool that Kyoto Animation is able to take these seemingly random aspects of life, like not in like a slice of life way, but some of their shows, like Surune is about Kyudo, um, Sound Euphonium is about um, like band and orchestra. Violet mm. Evergarden is about writing letters. Like, who would have thought that any of us <laughs> would give a crap about dude swimming and like what what comes with that? Which I'm glad that you mentioned the aimlessness and the direction was, and like the directions that everyone was like wondering where they should go in because that's what made season two so good to me because like season one was just it's like uh excuse the pun but like it's just getting your feet wet Mm. and you think okay like you know they have their whole futures ahead of them with at the end of season one so 
everyone's friends, everyone can pursue their dreams. But season two is like, what are those dreams? Mm -hmm. And in reality, like, what are our dreams? Like that, that really put into perspective. I'm 25 years old. I don't know what to do still. Mm. Like, what is my ambition? You know? Yeah, I know that on the surface level, free just seems like a lot of fan service, especially for girls. Like they think the guys are super hot and stuff, but like underneath that is so much complexity to the story. Like I can't remember if it's season three or a movie, but it's like when when Haruka goes with Rin and meets his foster family, not foster family, so his uh you know the family that puts him up in Australia. Yeah, his host parents, that's season two. Thank you, his host parents. Yeah, okay, again season two, the really good season. Mm-hmm. Like just all these little subtle moments of like that just feel so real, you know, like just away from swimming, just uh you know. Like those moments in the show are just like really cool. Like the moments away from swimming, like yeah, it, it is dope. It is dope. Yeah, because I just kept thinking, like, okay, this, like you said, it's fan servicey. I mean, they're they're unashamedly like flaunting the fan service to the point where they're comedic <laughs> about it. Yeah, <laughs> like having um. Rin's younger sister, Go, who is enamored with muscles, being the comedic effect, like, yeah, we know why you probably came here, but that's not what you're going to leave with. I mean, you're going to leave with the muscles, but there's going to be so much more that you're going to be thinking about by the time you are done with any sitting of free. Yeah, I feel like for the girls that got into it, for like the cute guys, like it, it becomes more about uh, their personality and like I can see how they would think they're kind of cute, you know, and like care for them. It's especially Haru, like that. Like, Haru's great, like <laughs> you know, even though we, even though he's super quiet, I, I do like him. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, there's there's a lot to take him with free. There's so much. And you can just feel the intensity ramp up with each um, with each season. So season one, you know, you feel like it was very kind of like it, it's on a friendship basis. That's what we're dealing with. Um, and like the, the fan service and the yaoi bait is there. And you're <laughs> like, you're just like, what? Mm. Like, what? well, OK, I get it. Like, it's, it's getting kind of deep. But then season two, like we've been kind of discussing, like, you know, you get into the the feeling of purpose and desire, dreams, where to go next, like, and then to have the ambition to for Haruka and Rin to want to go to the world stage. Mm. And, oh, I think my biggest gripe is that season three kind of backtracks on that. <sighs> Season three is where they bring in Ikia, right? Mm-hmm. The green haired kid. Mm-hmm. Mm. I feel like season three kinda they wanted just to not stretch it out, but like more characters, maybe just make a little more money off the franchise, kind of, you know, because like you said, season two was really getting into the nitty gritty of the futures and then they kind of did backtrack somewhat in season three. Yeah. It, season three was still dope, though. And then I guess it was just the time between the conclusion and then the season two, because doesn't season three end with them, like, again, wanting to like, uh, train in Sydney or something? Or... So, what happens at the end of season three is um, they're doing like the qualifiers for the world stage yeah 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 yeah. yeah. but it's so it, it's jarring almost because i by season two i'm like okay free went from being good to being amazing and then in season three they spend half of the season on that um like the relationship between haru and ikuya, ikuya who wasn't really in it the previous two seasons as well so exactly like yeah. they are just adding more trauma to haru's backstory 
<laughs> to shake him up, but like for him to get over it mid season and then be faced with something else, like we could have just had more friendly competition and then like the whole confidence shaking thing because his confidence gets shaken every season by something mm-hmm. new. So yeah, he's he's very fragile. He's Harry. fragile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like and that's honestly something else that I appreciate. But I'll get to that in a moment, but like to have him be shaken up twice in one season, first by the friendship thing and then by how big the world stage actually is, especially when he gets owned by Albert. Yeah, that's in season three, right? Yeah, yeah. that's like toward the end of season three. And he's like trying mm-hmm. to regain his footing and regain his confidence. But I'm glad that you <laughs> mentioned the fragility of Haru because you can say that about almost every male character <laughs> all, all of them <laughs> yeah. and i think that that is it's so interesting because mind you i'm i we we are men like we are supposed to have like a harder time accepting this but like the whole fragile masculinity thing that mm. like that we well that people say that we carry um free deconstructs that so well like Mm. you have like like i said makoto is like the softest out of everyone there but he's just like so pleasant but he has his fears his anxieties and we break those down nagisa and ray who low-key annoy me and i was like why are they still on the show oh (laughs) past season past season two like Mm. they have their issues like nagisa running away from home and ray just not being able to find his flow I mean, Haru being the the stoic type, he is the one who like gets destroyed internally more than anyone. And mm-hmm. like Rian, of course, being the quote unquote tough guy as opposed to Haru's stoicism. And you see him like crying at movies, being concerned for his little sister and being like afraid to talk to her about her dating. Like mm. there's just this like I said, deconstruction of fragile and toxic masculinity, like the archetypes that I think anime and media as a whole try to have us admire. Free is like, we're going to get behind the psychology of how these archetypes like may be on the inside, like how they actually affect the person and how what you see on the outside isn't particularly what's on the inside. Yeah, 100%, bro, 100%. Um, I want to touch on that in a sec, but just what you said about the whole yaoi thing with free, like the fan service and that, the yaoi stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, because so, so many people are like, oh, that show's just gay, it just looks like gay swimmers and stuff. And it's funny because they, they kind of allude to it one or two times like especially in the earlier season with makoto like this bits where he goes to say something and like he's kind of interrupted or there's like one scene when they're like partying and then it's really alluded to with like rin like it's obvious that rin has feelings for harry whether they're like sexual or not but like again that, that that's just one side to it like it's not really about that it's not it's not a traditional sports series like you said it's this whole uh thing about masculinity finding yourself and like i don't know free just does it like so differently to like other series i've seen um i'd say that harry as a character like he really like again he's he's super fragile and stuff but again, just seeing him like find his way in 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 the show that like, is is really dope. Like it's so dope. I feel like um Harry and Rin, the stories like I don't know that it's it it doesn't give me like full on Yaoi vibes or anything, but I feel like the way that they find themselves in free is just done a lot better than a lot of other shows. Like the humanity of the characters, like it's just so easy to relate to all of them. Like 
more so than other anime. Yeah, for me? sure. Yeah. Like like I said earlier, they they kind of lure you in like the whole um uh, even the ED, like the first ED is a perfect example. Like they are literally in like the um like Oh, when they're dancing. Oh, yeah, when they're dancing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they like actually do something with that in the um the movie uh take your marks the bridge movie but mm. like they lure you in with the fan service they lure you in with like there there is a bit of um yaoi bait like when um <laughs> haru drowns and like makoto is like about to give him mouth to mouth, or no no haru was about to give makoto mouth to mouth i think one or the other because one of them had drowned and like they were making like this big thing out of it and i'm like why are you hesitating your friend is about to die mm. give him the kiss of I, life mm. i think a lot of them are straight as well like they allude to like this whole gay thing it's funny but like <laughs> yeah and we're getting back to season one season one i feel like it's really introducing you to the characters like because I've seen a few girls on Instagram that like, rewatch it and they're like, oh, it's, it's not as good as I remember or why are they crying so much? They're crying all the time. But I was just into it, bro. Like all that emotion and stuff. Like yeah, I rocked with it, man. It was just, it was kind of different. Like it was nice. So yeah, season one's definitely just introducing you all to the characters and stuff. And then when it starts getting serious about their futures and that, like, yeah, it's, I did because I didn't expect that from free. Like I don't know yeah. about you, but I it's just like went into thinking, cool. So, yeah, like I was just thought, cool that like, it's going to be about swimming and whatnot. But yeah, when it really started to get into like the whole futures and like again seeing so many places in the real world, like when you go to the pool in Sydney, I think that's a real place. Like I've seen pictures online of like uh, shots from the anime and the real life location. So. Mm-hmm. It, it it just feels really real. Like I love anime that's set in our world, you know. And mm-hmm. again, just doing so much real shit like this, like going from college, uh, sorry, uh, high school swimming to you know the world stage and stuff. Mm-hmm. And again, like Haru's always been that like, very stoic, like just wanting to swim, not really wanting to swim for glory or anything like that. And Rin almost begging him at the end of one season, like, bro, like, I want you to swim on the world stage with me. Like, why are you always so, so blank? Like, why do you have such a blank expression all the time? Like, you know, like, this is your future now. Come on. And just like, like I've, I've had similar pressures like that in life too. And it's like, yeah, damn. Like, you know, I mean, I'm not talented like that to be, you know, swimming for Olympics or some shit, but. It's, it's dope still. And I, I, I sympathize with Harry as well. Like, you know, like when he kind of just stops swimming sometimes and it's like, he, yeah, he's too scared or he just hasn't figured shit out yet. But yes, yeah, they, they feel so real, the characters in this show, that like they feel so human. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, that is one thing that I can never. I mean, of course, I'm not taking anything away from Kyoto Animation other than. Um, sound euphonium because I hated sound euphonium, but um, <laughs> okay. But one thing about them, even with sound euphonium, they make no matter how outlandish the plot may be, they make some of the most grounded characters that you will see in fiction. Mm. Now, as to whether or not it's peak fiction, that's another story. But it's always impressive because, again. Who would have thought that I would care so much about seeing these Japanese swimmers grow from boyhood to adulthood and like see their swimming careers advance and care about what it is that they want to do in life? Like to have that bond, that connection, and then to have it go on for so long. And I mean, I had the luxury of watching all three seasons in the span of a few months as opposed to the people who had to wait years in between installments and of mm. course now i'm just thirsty for the finale films but like there's just so much there like there's so right. much there's so much humanity in free mm-hmm. 
I mean, there's humanity in everything Kyoto Animation makes, but I found myself caring about free a lot more than I anticipated. Maybe it's because I'm a man who cries. Maybe it's because I'm a man who has found and lost and found both ambition and confidence. Like mm -hmm. this, this show just like struck a lot of chords with me. So I, I am just impressed by how deep and complex it is, especially because when you initially look at it and you see that first joke that becomes a recurring gag about muscles, you think this isn't something that I can take seriously, but it's something that quietly demands your attention and for you to acknowledge its sincerity. Like that is that is what I love about free. It's it's so sincere. Um the thing with free, uh oh yeah, sorry, I was gonna say uh similar to you, I watched the first three seasons in a very short space of time in uh early early twenty twenty one. I was actually ill with COVID at the time. So, you know, I, I just managed to watch the first three seasons like very quick. Mm -hmm. And then again, yeah, I got super sucked in. I really liked it. And I was just excited for the concluding movie. I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is just so cool. That like, is <laughs> like, like, how did we go from like, you know, like, cause even season one, I liked season one, Like it was still so cheesy and corny, but I was just into it, man. I was like, cool, like, you know, and it's funny, I've had a few friends like kind of tease me, like low key. Like, oh, like free, like what's but what's it about? Like, ain't it just gay swimmers? I'm like, what like like you're saying, no, like there's so much more to it. Like, yes, it's about swimming, and yes, there's like fan service type jokes or whatnot, but it's more than that, man. It's just about, you know, the futures and again, everyone's kind of into the swimming thing. I do think with season three, it was low key to again introduce albert and like line up the concluding movies and i think they just wanted to just bring in more characters and it's done really well in the sense that all the characters are kind of on a similar journey like through swimming obviously mm -hmm. and we just get so much more insight into their lives like because with ikia his older brother wants to swim his, his older brother used to swim as well and it, the way it's done is really cool because uh, like obviously swimming is a sport but the way swimming is is not like uh you know football soccer basketball it's not like a team sport so because i used to swim right i used to do a lot of swimming in high schools it's, it's very boring like training is just kind of up and down uh, yeah i kind of hate it <laughs> it's just up and down up and down <laughs> yeah you know it, i it's a love hate relationship, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I really like the way they try to make it about the whole uh, relay thing, like mm -hmm. friendship and trying to make it like a team. Because again, swimming is very personal; it's just straightforward, and like they kind of bring all that in, like you know, just uh, focus on freestyle and forget this whole relay thing. But you know, power of friendship and just not just power of friendship. It's like it's deep, man. Like they they were swimming in the high school swim club from years back, even uh, I think the coach at the time, and he's working in like another swimming pool and stuff. And you know, the guy that um, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, he was going to the games to cheer them on and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot, it's a lot. And you kind of almost worry for Haru and a few of the characters like about their future, like where they're going to go after, you know, spending so much time swimming and clearly liking swimming and, you know, I won't say how the movie ends, but yes. Thank you. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. But like, it's, yeah, it's, it's really dope seeing uh, how it all kind of concludes. And just, yeah. I think, yeah, Harry was a little too fragile, but it's kind of for the plot. Like, it's, it's very dramatized and over the top, like certain bits, especially like Harry, but again i was just into it so i just kind of went with the whole thing and really enjoyed it man <laughs> I, I don't know too many guys that watch free as well i know like three chicks that really like it but <laughs> no man this is dope <laughs> you know you actually said something that i had been thinking 
but you, you put it into much better words than I could have. You said that swimming is a personal sport, even if you're on a team. And one thing that I really love about Free, like we've talked about this, um, like how every character is going on their own journey. Like they're, what's so cool about Free is that external factors don't particularly influence their decisions. It's literally about what is right for me right now. And it's it's something that like adults have trouble with. I mean, a lot of people say like the male adult brain isn't fully matured until it's like 26. And mm. these are teenagers turned adults, turned young adults who are actively trying to like think for themselves and think about what is the best path for them. Like for Reen, it's like, I'm going to swim on the world stage. There's nothing else for me. Like, yes, at first I was influenced by my father, but this is for me. For Haruka, I just want to be in the water to I want to be on the world stage. This is for me. For Makoto, I want to be a professional trainer. Like, it's for them, but this is also mm. for me. And it's not like a it's not like a selfish, self-centered thing that they have going on, but it is purely like staying true to yourself and acting out of your own best self-interest without mm. doing anything to slight somebody else. And that is just like not stepping on someone's toes while trying to make a better life for yourself at whatever age you're at is so hard to do. And mm. of course, you know, some things come easy, some things come hard when it comes to anime characters. While a lot of things are hard for, you know, people in real life, but they just navigate that so well, that line between like passion and responsibility that all of them have to themselves. Everyone except for Haru. <laughs> Everyone except for Haru. Uh, Haru just, ha Haru is just. He just gets upset else. over anything. Yeah, the um the bit where Makoto tells Haru that he decides to not go, to, like he goes to like he wants to go to a normal college and like become a swim teacher and stuff. And I I could relate to that kind of because it was just so crushing for Haruka to just see all of his friends making decisions and like getting on with their lives you know because i've been in similar positions before where it's like you know you kind of just see people doing things or i'm going to do this at college i'm going to do that and you know when you kind of haven't made that choice yet and mm -hmm. you know I, I could sympathize with harry i mean he oh he over dramatized it but <laughs> like so yeah it's, it's interesting just you know, just again seeing everybody kind of take a different path. Makoto's like, well, look, I'm not a great swimmer like you, not as great as you, so I'm going to do this. But you know, maybe you should do that. And so many different people can give you advice, but again, it, the decision lies with you. And it's so hard to make these life-changing decisions. Sometimes, you know, like what job am I going to get into? What am I going to study for? So again, just kind of. Uh, riding that same feeling with the characters in free is oh is that it's intense it gets me like all worked up and just like damn you know like i kind of feel it for them um also rin uh he had a stumble early in the show as well because when he went to sydney initially it was because he was really good and you know he was somewhat big-headed of his swimming ability and when he got there everyone was low-key better than him so he was like it was really hard to deal with and again uh being like the only japanese kid there uh having to learn english and all this stuff so because even even when i saw free i thought like this show looks like it's about swimming but it doesn't look like a, a traditional sports anime which again is more heavily centered around the actual sport i.e you know uh, blue lock was hot right now or slam dunk you know what i mean like those series yeah. are very much about the actual sport and yeah but yeah this didn't because i know swimming i'm like swimming is up and down so <laughs> you swim up and down up and down so the way that they made this 
so centered around swimming and all their lives and that. Mwah, right. Chef's kiss. This was done really well. Yeah. Really well. Like the first two seasons, managing its characters so well before fumbling slightly in the third season. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. A slight fumble. But it's is, is just bringing in so many more characters with yeah. season three. And I take it that's to make the move, the finale movies even better. The finale movies are really good, in my opinion. Yeah, they're, they're really good. So yeah. they had to add those characters then. Yeah, because it makes it feel more realistic. Mm-hmm. And some, uh, I don't want to say somewhat unrealistic because it's like there's so many guys that's good at swimming, but I mean, cool. But like, it makes it more realistic in a sense. It's not just Haru and his high school friends. There's like so many other people and like, you know, the coach that's training uh, Haru Carr and you know, there's 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 a lot that's going on there. Um, we we haven't really mentioned eyes. I was going back to say eyes, eyes and Sasuke, but so, so, Sasuke, you know, you know, Rin's friend, the guy that gets the shoulder the shoulder injury. Sasuke is kind he, of a jerk. I I did not want to talk about Sasuke. <laughs> <laughs> he is a jerk. He is a jerk. But he, even he kind of comes around though. Like, yeah, he comes yeah, around, he comes, but like he, he's part of what made season two like like he he made. He uh, he presented an obstacle for Haru, but like Haru was his own biggest obstacle in season two. So I'm like, like it's kind of like a fake out, like what they did with season three, but like it was more natural in season two. But like, mm. yes, yeah, Sosuke, yes, yes, yes. Sosuke definitely played a hand in Haru's development, um, and really kind of tested his dedication to swimming and his relationship with Rin to an extent. Mm. So I thought, yeah, like Sosuke, I mean, he's not a, he's a well-written character and I really do like understand what he goes through, especially as the series progresses. But I, at first I really did not like him and his, like he, yeah, of course. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Like he's more stoic than Haru and that just like, he, he almost seems boring from time to time. So I was just, yeah, he don't say too much. I think again, that's just not just not just for this reason, but like chicks would find that shit hot or something like you know. Mm-hmm. He's just a cool character that don't really say much, and he's kind of tall and big. But just to touch on something you said, bro, um, mm-hmm. Harry was his biggest obstacle, like his own biggest obstacle, not mm-hmm. not Sosuke. That's kind of the message of Frido. Is kind of it's like we are our own biggest obstacles. In a way, sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, Rin found his own physical limitations with swimming and that. And so I think, well, centered around Haru, it's just about him making a choice, you know. It's like, we're not kids anymore. We're getting older. Everyone's kind of doing this. What do you want to do, bro? And that's, that's, that's probably the, the biggest, not lesson, but the biggest message that spoke to me through free. Just making that choice of what am I gonna do? It's annoying because Harry's so talented and he was just kind of like not wasting his talents, but because I yeah, I, I don't want to say too much, you know. But yeah, yeah well, 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 I mean, obviously you've seen the end of season three, so mm-hmm. yeah, he is gonna try a race in the on the world stage, so mm-hmm. which yeah. I mean, it was inevitable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it took him a while to <laughs> kind of realize that he wanted to do it. Or, mm. so. But yeah. nonetheless, I mean, again, I haven't seen the finale movies. I haven't seen the, the prequel from when they were kids yet. Um, but overall, I am very satisfied with how three ran for the most part. Like, I think they did a really great job. Yeah, hundred percent. Me too, man. Especially because there was actually no source material for free, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. I think with well, a lot of Kill Annie shows, they're all like originals. Like, yeah. A lot of them actually, like, um, a lot of them actually come from light novels. Oh, it's my bad. Sorry. Yeah. yeah like but... uh, Haruhi, um, Love Chunibyo and Other Delusions, Violet Evergarden, Sound Euphonium, uh, Surune. I know, like a fair amount of them actually came from light novels, but free, 
came out of a promo that they made, if I'm not mistaken, and that promo just ended up turning into a show. Okay. Yeah. It's really nice when you see a studio do like their own thing and it and it works. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm. And what's so cool about Kyo Annie is that a lot of the light novels that they adapt are ones that they publish. Mm. Okay. So I mean it's all Kyoto Animation original work, but um it's like from Kyoto Animation to Kyoto Animation for fans. Yeah. That's nice. That's nice that they do that. Mm-hmm. I think even K on was from manga as well, actually, or something like you know that the four coma manga. I think. I believe so. I know that there was a convention a while ago that was selling the full K on omnibus. Oh, wow! Cool. <laughs> That's I the... wanted to get it so bad, but I did not go to that convention. Too many people. <laughs> yeah. I actually haven't seen that Euphorian show, you know. I know it's a bait one. Uh, well, it's actually getting a season three. Um, mm. But I've watched the first two seasons, and I watched Liz and the Bluebird. Now, Liz and the Bluebird was amazing. But Sound Euphonium, um, you got <laughs> you to gotta be like a really, you got to be a certain type of like music aficionado, and you really got to be into the slice of life drama thing that they tried to mix in together to appreciate sound euphonium. And while I can appreciate a lot of things and I do appreciate their effort, it just didn't land for me. Um, the actual mm. show, but hopefully that'll change with season three, but free free is amazing. Mm. It is amazing. It is amazing. I agree. <laughs> So let me ask you, do you have anything else that you want to say about free? Or do you feel like we've covered pretty much all the spoiler free ground that we can cover? I feel that we've covered pretty much all the spoiler free ground. At one point you said that you didn't like Ray and and Nagasa. Um, (laughs) They just, they're annoying and they kind of bore me. Uh, I feel that season one, they were important. Um, but yeah, by the end, especially by the movies, like because what all Rin and Harry and people like they've left school now, so mm-hmm. the, the films are way more centered on them and like the new juniors they have in the swim club. Then, like, yeah, yeah, like when yeah. they spent an entire episode on them, <laughs> I was very upset. <laughs> that just bothered me. I mean, the main characters have moved on we i i understand that you need like the consistency to be like okay these guys were a part of season one and they were a part of season two so we got to keep them in rotation but i i I didn't care about them and i really didn't care when they started (laughs) adding more people to the iwatobi swim club i mean that what do you what do you want about come on (laughs) so no i hear you i hear you so that that's my other gripe, aside from how season three was handled, the chop the slight choppiness was that they continued to use Nagisa and Ray when I mean, of course they have to have them in universe, but they could have focused on them a lot less. Yeah, they yeah, they could have they could have <laughs> for sure. Uh but yeah, uh final type things for me to say on about free like it's a hard sell to like your typical shonen loving dude that doesn't like swimming, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it, the its best moments have nothing to do with swimming. But like, even though it's centered around swimming, it's just like just the conversations they have with each other, like uh, the old coach and like just like seeing Makoto improving his job like getting little compliments uh that he's doing good as a swim coach and stuff and Uh just getting to see people excel in their field and like see how shaky everyone is at the start not shaky but like you know like we go from i keep saying it but we go from like little kids to like adults making you know big life-changing decisions and Uh kind of really following through on their plans and just 
the drama and the way everyone kind of is linked is it just makes a really nice show a really comfortable show and one thing we haven't mentioned is the animation is beautiful it's really nice to watch the, it's kyoto the... animation bro that goes without saying <laughs> <laughs> true 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 <laughs> but the, la- the last bit i'm gonna say like um i i always make it a point to reiterate kyoto animation is a studio that's main theme in every work that it produces is love and um yes in this one of course it's love for your peers and love for the things that you want to do but there's also the central theme that is peppered in very gracefully about growth growth is the main Mm. theme of free not just the fact that we see them grow from teenagers to young adults but that we see them again go on these paths that they are going on and i just think that's extremely powerful and that is why free has broken into one of my favorite kyoto animation productions 100 percent agree with that man it's all about the growth and yeah free is definitely one of my favorite kill any shows too man <laughs> well it, it was a dope ride <laughs> yeah for sure mm. Well, and I, I hope you get to see the movie soon, man. Dude, I want to see the movie so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to follow my friend, Igerisu Weeabu, you can follow him on Instagram at Igerisu Weeabu. Um, Would you like to spell that? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure thing. Igerisu, that's I-G-I-R-I-S-U. Weeabu, W-E-E-A-B-O-O. Yes. Yeah. I think also, I got that right. He's also a great content creator. He watches a lot of anime, reads a lot of manga, and he's just an all together great person to talk to. He's a really nice friend to have. I'm happy that I met him. And thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for having me, man. It's been great just to talk about free with another free fan, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And if you want to follow me, you can do so on Instagram at anime alpha goat, or you can email me recommendations at our anime home at gmail.com. If you want to support what I'm doing, then please feel free to contribute to the Patreon. For five dollars, you get a monthly exclusive episode and access to the Discord server where you can talk about anime, manga, music, and life with other anime fans. So it's a lot of fun, and I hope to see you there. But with all that being said, thank you for listening, and we are out. Woo! <laughs>